friends, it's Christy back with you on the My Favorite Things YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the new Yuzu You Make My Heart Go Boom stamp set. So I've stamped that out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Extreme Black Hybrid Ink, and I'll be coloring it with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with this patriotic little guy's skin, and I'm using E000. E00 and E11 for that. First using the E11 to lay in some shadows up under his hairline and on the inner parts of his ears along his neck and his hands where the sleeves are kind of overlapping. And then I'm going to blend that out with the E00 and then I'll come in with the E000 and pull that color toward the center of his face and then also fill in the rest of his ears and his hands. And then I'm going to give him some rosy cheeks using R11 and R20. Just do a little R20 first and then trace around the edges of that with the R11 to blend that into his skin tone. For his hair, I decided to go with a light blonde. So I'm using E51, E53, E55 and E57 and I am doing lightest to darkest for hair so I initially laid in where the shadows will eventually go with the E51 and then darken that up a bit with the E53 then I'm coming in with the E55 and once I have that laid in I'm going to work my way back down in the reverse so I'm going to skip the E57 for now I like to do that as a last step so I'm going back with that E53 now and blending out that E55 and then I'll do the E51 to give him a highlight on the tips of the little strands of hair and then I like to go in with that darkest shade, the E57, and just add a bit more definition using the very tip of my marker and just very light pressure so I get super thin lines. And then I just use the lightest shade, the E51, to just kind of soften that a bit into the rest of the coloring so it's still defined but uh, just kind of blends in a bit. And then I'm using E50 and E51 to give him a white shirt. I just wanted that to have a little bit of shading on it. I also did his sleeves that are hanging below his suit jacket. And then I'm going to do the white parts of my eagle with these two shades as well. For the darker parts of my eagle, I'm going to go a bit darker with E55, E57, and E59. And I did move those markers over to a separate piece of paper because they were casting a bit of shadow onto the coloring panel and I wanted to try to eliminate that for you guys. So I laid in that E59 down at the bottom of the wings and the belly and then up under the feathers of the neck and then I'm blending that out with the E57, filling in with the E55. And I will use those same shades to color in his shoes. So I'm going back to the E59 and I want the toe of the shoe to have the highlight. So I'm laying in my shadows on the bottom and also filling in the sole and then blending out with the E57 and then using the E55 on the toe like I mentioned. Then I will take that E57 and fill in the little flag handle. For the eagle's beak, I went with Y13, Y15, and Y17 because they are a little bit more orange leaning yellows and I just filled in the feet with the Y17. And then I decided to give him some white pants to match his white shirt so I went back to my E50 and E51 added some shadows down the left side of each leg and up under the suit jacket and blended that out with the E50. And I also pulled in my colorless blender to just soften the edge of that E50 and help it fade into the white cardstock. For his suit jacket, I wanted to go with a nice bright blue. So I chose B24, B26, and B29. 
So I'm using the B29 to add some shadow down the underside of the arms, also around the lapels and where the front of the jacket overlaps and where his arm is kind of in front of the rest of the jacket as well. I used the B29 for that and then I began to blend that out with the B26, just pulling that darkest color in toward the middle of the image making sure that I get a nice smooth blend there. And then once I'm done with that, I will come in with the lightest shade, which is the B24. And I'm going to, again, pull that B26 into this highlighted part now, and then fill in the rest of that white space. Once I'm finished with that, I am going to give him a top hat to match. So I'm going to go back to my B29, and my B29 was looking a little bit leaky, so I pulled off the other end of the cap to just equalize the pressure in the barrel so that would prevent that from happening. And then I um, added some shadows up under the hat brim and also on the edges of the hat to help it look round. I did it much more heavily on the left side, just a little bit on the right, and then blended that out with the B26. And then I'll go in with the B24 for the highlight, where the brim of the hat is kind of turned up toward the light, and also on the center of the top part of the hat. Again, just going over the edges first of the previous shade to pull that color together and then filling in any white space. And then for the lapel, I'm going to color that to be the same fabric, but I'm just using the darkest two shades. So I started with the B29 and then filled in with the B26. So that area wouldn't have as much highlight on it. For his bow tie and his hat band, I wanted that to be in red. So I'm using R29, R39, and R59. A little R59 first, and then that R39. And then I'll save the majority of that space for the R29, which is a really bright, pretty red. It's just gonna pull this whole combo together. And I'll just fill that in and then fill in his little bow tie. And then I'm also going to color the flag to be red because I just wanted that shade to be in one more place on the card. So this time I put the B59 where the fabric is kind of bent backwards the furthest and then blended that out with the other two shades. And then I'm going to trim all of these images out with their coordinating dies. For my focal panel, I took the inside and out stitched arch stacks and die cut that out of some Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, but I left it all together to keep the surface even because I wanted to do some heat embossing. I treated that with a powder tool first to eliminate any static cling, and then I'm stamping the firework image out three times, and I'm just turning that image as I stamp it down each time so that it gets like a little bit of a different look to it. Once that is done, I can remove the outer part of that die and then I'm going to coat that in some liquid platinum embossing powder. And once I have that nicely coated, I'll tap off any excess and then I'll bring my heat gun to that. I like to start on the back just to try to eliminate some of the warping and then bring that to the front and I will heat set that powder until it is all nice and shiny. We have several birthdays in our family in July and they're all guys. So I thought this would be a fun chance to turn this into a birthday card. And so I pulled a sentiment from the Birdie Brown Birth Yay stamp set and it says, let's celebrate you. So I will set that aside and then I also created an insert for the inside of my card by trimming down another piece of white cardstock with the second largest of the A2 stitch rectangle stacks set two. And I'm going to stamp the birthday cake and the it's your birthday yay, which is from that same stamp set. And then the firework is from the you make my heart go boom. So I stamped that down a couple of times to make sure I had a nice impression. 
and then I'm going to go back to my focal panel and begin to add some Distress Oxide ink to color that in and create a nice night sky. So I'm using faded jeans first for the bottom portion of that sky and kind of bringing that up to where the fireworks are. And I'm gonna go on the top edge of that as well and just add a little bit more of that. I'm leaving the area around the fireworks white for now. And then I wanted to color those in with some bright festive kind of July 4th colors. So I'm using candied apple for the red and I'm just gonna swirl that on right over top of the firework. I'm gonna do two of them in red. So I'm gonna go over this one and then also the one on the opposite side. So I'll have those two in red and then in the center I decided to go with blue but I wanted it to be a little bit of a brighter blue so I went with blueprint sketch. So I'm going to go over that one and then I'll go back to my candied apple distress oxide tool, do a little bit more blending and the same with the faded jeans. Then I wanted to darken up the bottom of this scene, so I added in some chipped sapphire and just brought that up maybe about a third of the way. And then I wanted to darken up just the bottom edge a little bit more, so I used ground espresso. I actually meant to grab black soot, but once I realized I had ground espresso, I figured that would work just as well. Just wanted to darken that up a bit, and I actually really like how it turned out. Once I'm done with the inking, I'll grab a dry paper towel and just buff over that embossing powder to make that more vivid once again. And then I wanted to add some stars to help this look like a night sky. So I'm using some Gansai Tambi starry colors. I'm using the pearl shade. I'm just tapping that on my finger so I get a nice little splatter of droplets. And those are gonna add a little bit of a shine, but I also wanted some whiter stars. So I used some Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White for that and just repeated that process and got some nice white splatters as well. So I set that aside to dry and started to work on my background pattern papers using the Stars and Stripes 6x6 pad. I really liked these three here at the back of the pad, so that's what I chose to use. And I die cut those using the largest of the A2 stitch rectangle stacks, set two. And then for the smaller strips, I just use my paper trimmer. So I'm going to start with this star print and adhere that down to a blue beyond card base. So I've scored and folded that to be a standard size A2 card. It's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. And then I'm going to add this plaid print going across uh, the center down toward the bottom. Then I'll add a thin bead of glue and add the thinner of these red and white stripes. And then I'll add the larger red and white stripe up at the top. And I wanted my stripes to be lined up perfectly so it looked like one continuous piece behind the plaid. So I did need to flip that upside down before adhering that. Then I added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel to add a bit of dimension to the card. So I'll just peel off those release papers and I'm gonna add that over on the right hand side just for a little bit of a different look today. And then I'm ready to add in my images. So I'm gonna start with this little guy. He's like uh, Uncle Sam's son, right? Or nephew, I don't know. He's super cute though. So I'm gonna add him over on the left of that focal panel. And then before I press him down too tightly, I wanted to add the little flag in his left hand. So that's kind of uh, sticking out the back there. And then I'll take that eagle and I'm gonna add that into his outstretched hand. So I'm just setting that down so that it looks like it's perching there. Very cute. And then for my sentiment, I trim that down with the essential stitched sentiment strips. And I added some foam tape where it would hang over the edge of the focal panel and then liquid glue for the parts that'll be on top and I'm going to add that over on the right hand side as well. 
and I couldn't resist adding a little bit of glitter to a card that features both fireworks and stars, both sparkly things. So I added a little bit to the hat band and the red flag and his bow tie. And then I also decided to add it to the centers of the two fireworks where you can see them. And I also added a few little dots here and there for some extra stars in that background. Then all that was left was to add the insert to the inside of the card. So I'm going to open that up and adhere that down right in the center so you get that nice border of that bright blue. So it's red, white, and blue on the inside as well. And I will lift that up to the camera so you can see all of the detail. Give you one last look at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed the June edition of Christy Gets Crafty with My Favorite Things. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and you can leave me a comment down below. I love chatting with you guys. Subscribe to My Favorite Things for more inspiring videos just like these here on screen. Bye-bye!